Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Cathedral Church of St. Mark. Thank you for joining us for worship. If you wouldn't mind, before we begin our service, I'd like for us to pray together. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions may be healed, and we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace, peace to, to his, his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord God heavenly, heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring us forth and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the, from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Isra Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The God... The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember the 
God has done. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Remember the marvels God has done. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels God has done. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Remember the marvels God has done. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. Remember the marvels God has done. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen, hallelujah. Remember the marvels God A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. 
And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my favorite paintings of the Annunciation uh, is by Botticelli. It depicts Mary climbing a staircase and casting a surprised glance over her shoulder at the Archangel Gabriel, who has made a sudden appearance at the foot of the stairs. Of course, there's no shortage of versions of the Annunciation and most of them portray Mary looking straight on at Gabriel as if she's been expecting him all along. The element of surprise of sacred interruption is downplayed. But in Botticelli's version, the surprise and interruption really carry the day. Mary is in the midst of an ordinary everyday activity, climbing a staircase, and yet she has the wherewithal, the flexibility, the responsive adaptiveness to drop what she's doing and make room for this strange other whose message turns her world and her idea of herself completely upside down. If we start reading scripture with an eye towards sacred interruptions, it's as if we start seeing them everywhere. Just last week, for example, we had the beautiful story of Pharaoh's unnamed daughter who was going down to the river to bathe when softly over the purling waters, she hears an infant mewling. She too stops what she is doing and bends down into the reeds to discover a baby in a basket. She knows her father's edict uh, that all the Israelites' firstborn sons were to be killed, but she does something different. She goes against the grain of worldly power that operates on the basis of a sacrificial violence heaped on the backs of innocent victims and goes with the grain of the universe, love. She stoops not to murder, but to offer the milk of mercy and love. She suckles instead of scapegoats. In our reading from Exodus, uh, we encounter another one of those sacred interruptions, Moses at the burning bush in Rembrandt's on-the-fly pen and ink sketch of the encounter included in your bulletin, there's a distinctly narrative feel to the scene. Moses is kind of moping along after his father-in-law's sheep, minding his own business, lost perhaps in a daydream, when something catches his attention. Out of the corner of his eye, he catches a fleeting glimpse of something that pulls him up short and stops him dead in his tracks. In the loose, looping swirls of pen and ink, you can almost feel Moses turning aside and drawing back. The bush is blazing but not consumed, and Moses says, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see 
why the bush is not burned up. Again, we see that part of what characterizes people like Mary, Pharaoh's unnamed daughter, and Moses is their capacity for surprise, their receptivity to the unknown, their willingness to have their best laid plans overturned and to give themselves wholeheartedly to an unexpected, unplanned for, and indeed unimaginable experience with a degree of curiosity, wonder, and openness. It would have been easy, perhaps expected, for any of these three people to just carry on with their lives. Mary has a staircase to climb. Pharaoh's daughter has her bath waiting for her, and Moses is supposed to be looking after Jethro's sheep. Each one has duties they are meant to accomplish, things on the to-do list. And in the eyes of a productivity-minded bureaucrat, they might even be considered idlers, woolly-minded dreamers who can't focus on the task at hand. Each of them, in a certain way, has taken off their figurative sandals and realize that the place they are standing is indeed holy ground. Concerning this phrase, remove your sandals, Metropolitan Callistos Ware notes in a lecture on the practice of the Jesus prayer. Now, on the interpretation of the Greek fathers, for example, Gregory of Nyssa, shoes made from skins of dead animals signify the deadness of repetition, boredom, inattentiveness. Take off your shoes then means symbolically free yourself from what is lifeless, from enslavement to the trivial, the mechanical, the repetitive. Shake off the deadness of boredom. Wake up, come to yourself, open your spiritual eyes, cleanse the doors of your perception. Look and see, listen. There's a social justice dimension to taking off your shoes as well, of course. For too long, the structural inequality and systemic racism of our country have operated in a mechanical, unconscious, and brutally repetitive fashion. Learning to take off these shoes to wake up to and confront a system where not everyone is treated equally or fairly is the burning bush of our time. That's the prophetic voice calling us right here and right now if we can turn aside and listen. God wants God's children to be free, to be liberated from social, political, economic, racial uh, oppression in every age. Leading the people out from the yoke of slavery under Pharaoh is a project to which God's children are still called in this place. Bishop Callistos continues, What do we experience when we take off our shoes and begin to walk barefoot? We suddenly become sensitive in a good way, vulnerable in a positive manner. The earth under our feet comes alive. We feel grains of dust between our souls. We feel the texture of the grass. So it is spiritually. Removing our shoes, freeing ourselves from inner deadness, we begin to realize that God is very close. The world around us is holy. We renew our sense of awe and wonder before each thing. Each thing, each person, becomes a sacrament of the divine presence, a means of communion with God. That, I think, is one way to hear Jesus' injunction to lose your life. He's really saying, lose your life of mechanical, repetitive, bored inattentiveness. Let that so-called life go and come alive. Awaken to your God and awaken to your neighbor. Be present to the presence that is always here and overflowing. Stop setting your mind on things that distract and open yourself to the good and broad land, the land of milk and honey that is the present moment. I was reminded of a book of poetry by Ron Silliman called Skies, uh, in which he tasked himself with writing a single sentence uh, each day for an entire year in a notebook about how the sky looked at that moment. 
He wrote another book called Jones in which he looked only at the ground for the year and employed the very same procedure. At the time, Silliman was living in San Francisco, so he had lots of opportunity to chart the various changes of Northern California's shape-shifting skies. Here's a tiny little sampling. A sooty haze reduces the hills to plains, one over another. In spite of the cold, the roofer wears a t-shirt, the colorless light of an average sun. A flock of small birds over the valley abruptly changes direction. One ray of muted light, very white angles through the thickening clouds, only the inmost branches of the plum tree still bear leaves. The cat is sneezing, today's traffic very loud. The glare in the warm haze bleaches garden's colors, buzz of a small plane, shimmer of a spider's thread in the plum, in the plum tree light. Now, that might not sound like the kind of poetry we're used to hearing, and it might be the first time that Ron Silliman's ever been quoted in a Sunday sermon, but the intention behind what he's up to is just as radical as what Callistos uh, Ware is telling us, to shake off the deadness of boredom, to look and see and listen. Silliman takes something that we ordinarily give only passing attention to and invests it with loving, careful attention. Instead of seeing a generic sky, we see it in its minute particular, particularity and its vivid, unrepeatable uniqueness. And we, when we invest something with our full attention, its true nature, its sacramental nature, uh, starts to eke its way into our awareness. Elizabeth Barrett Browning in her poem, Aurora Lee, uh, written about a century and a half before Silliman's, puts it this way. Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush a fire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes, uh, but only he, only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round it and pluck blackberries and daub their natural faces unaware more and more from the first similitude. Only she who takes off her shoes is able to perceive that earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush afire with God. The rest, rather comically, just stuff their faces with blackberries unawares. Perhaps these days it's not so much blackberries, but the 24-hour news cycle, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mindless television, video games, all features of our contemporary culture of distraction. So attention, giving ourselves uh, and our beloved attending to people, to things, uh, is really the doorway to presence. And in case you're wondering, attention is just another word for prayer, which is just another word for love. The great mystic Simone Weil reminds us absolutely unmixed attention is prayer. Whether it's giving our attention to a friend while we're talking on the phone and resisting the temptation to be productive during that time and clean the dishes in the sink or feeling our feet on the ground as we move from one room to the next or actually taking the time to taste the food we put in our mouths. Whenever we give our full attention to any task, no matter how small, no matter how seemingly insignificant or trivial, it becomes a doorway to presence. It becomes prayer. That's how every moment of our lives lived with wholehearted attention can become prayer. That's what it means, as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, to pray without ceasing. During the pandemic, it's easy for a certain dull drabness to take hold of our days. One day blends into the next and we can't tell a Monday from a Thursday. But if we take a cue from Mary, if we take a cue from Pharaoh's daughter, from Moses, from Solomon, from Elizabeth Barrett Browning, we have the precious opportunity to realize the gift of this time. We are indeed in a wilderness, a desert time, just like where Moses finds himself. The usual supports, the usual sources of entertainment and connection 
have been stripped away and we're left with shocking, shockingly little. But remember God's promise to Moses that God will lead the Israelites to the land of milk and honey, that God will bring them up out of Egypt, that God will walk with and ahead of them each and every step of the way. Perhaps that is the gift of this strange, lonely, and admittedly grim time, that we realize all that we've taken for granted while we walked around with those skins on our feet. Perhaps there is an invitation to take off our shoes, to become vulnerable, to look and see and to listen, to come alive and live with attention. Perhaps then we will come to see each moment as a sacrament, an opportunity for communion with the divine and shape-shifting clouds and Jackson Pollock-esque chewing gum splotches on the sidewalk in the sacred interruption that scuttles our plans in each other and in ourselves. Perhaps then we will see more clearly those who labor under the yoke of oppression and do the work that God has given us to do, the building up of the kingdom of God where the dignity of each person is celebrated and cherished and where no one is cast aside. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that that is seen and unseen. We believe believe in one Lord Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son Son of God, God, eternally eternally begotten of the Father, Father, God from God, God, light from light, light, true true God God from true God, begotten, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will will come come again again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 11 of your service bulletin. My sisters and brothers, be kindly affectioned one to another with love, and let us come before God, saying, We glory in your holy name, and And offer offer to to you our our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. Lord Jesus, you bid your disciples take up their cross and follow you. May your holy church desire above all the things of God that we might overcome evil with good. We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Lord God of our forebears, you know the sorrows of the afflicted. Deliver those who are being oppressed and grant your peace to all the world. We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Good Lord, you make known your wondrous works. Reveal yourself in the works of your hands as as even you did to Moses, our forebearer on the holy mountain. We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. O Lord, grant that the people of our land be given to hospitality. May we abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good, and in so doing, may we live peaceably one with another. We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Strong Lord, make us weep with those who weep. Reveal your mercy to the sick and the sorrowful, that they may be healed and comforted, especially Jacob and the Blake family, the people of Kenosha, Wisconsin, those on our parish prayer lists, and those we name now, either silently or aloud. We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Almighty God, bless your people with life evermore. 
Give to the dead rest from their labors and life everlasting. We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give God thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep keep the the feast. feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break, alleluia, is the communion of the body of Christ. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. One body are we, alleluia, for the many we share one bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though your people cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you you have have graciously accepted us us as living members of your Son, our our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.